Hey, fanboy nation. This is your pal Daffy Duck, and you're watching. You're watching. We're watching. You're watching. Fanboy. 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 A fanboy, etc. Fanboy nation. Dot. I assume. Uh, um. <laughs> So what happens when superheroes start uh, being real and interacting with each other? Oh, here comes Lindsay. So we'll do another one in a second. Did Lindsay just screw it up? I know. It's all Lindsay's fault. Yeah. <laughs> I like Lindsay Miller. I, well, she's not here. We should talk about her. Yeah. Yeah, she's all right. Yes, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to check on and make sure everything was going okay. And you didn't it was to, use, to interrupt. <laughs> uh, Darn, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Let's kill the <laughs> intro. I see how Look it is. Look at that icon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a uh, street She's artist. Really yeah. goth out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm so goth. Piercing everywhere. Oh, uh, yes. Just with that accent, I picture a Jersey girl with giant hair. Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> 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 I'm from Texas. Uh, tall, uh, just normal, you know, not big hair. Normal, okay. normal size hair. Normal hair. Normal size hair. Yeah. All so, right. Well. So it's I big everywhere guess. except Texas is her hair. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Everybody in our company now is the Don's Texan, Bert's Texas. Uh, we have Slaney's Texas. I almost went until I found out they're insane property <laughs> taxes. It's just good people, man. It's a good place to be, brother. A good place. <laughs> <laughs> Don, <laughs> a a couple of years down Don's mouth, and suddenly he is one Southern boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's. I will uh, let you guys get to it then. I don't uh, want to interrupt it. All right, so uh, you know, introduce yourselves when we start talking, and uh, which characters you're playing, and we'll go from there. Let me uh, count us down from three, two, one, and we'll get started. So three. Two, one. This is going to be a fun afternoon as our pre interview has already been all over the place. We're talking now about superhero diaries with Scott Zakarian, who I finally got to pronounce his name right after a year and a half of knowing no, the man. It's and Zach. I still got it wrong. It's Zachary. Zach, see? I'm never going to get it right. <laughs> so, everyone, right. How, you guys, how you guys doing today? It's a pleasure right. to talk to everyone. Fill us in on superhero diaries, this new YouTube series of yours. So it's a it's an everywhere series. We are on YouTube and we're facing YouTube a lot because of the uh, ability to share, the ability to interact. You certainly do have that on Facebook, and we are on Facebook. But uh, right now, YouTube is more of a uh, just because we have more tricks and, and secrets to pull out of uh, our uh, bag. But that's not the question you asked me. The question you asked me is something about tell us about our series on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so Superhero Diaries is basically uh, the multiverse of everything that's going on and every sort of um, trope that we're seeing in superheroes movies and deconstructing them and then seeing pop culture through their eyes and seeing what their lives are like when they are not being superheroes. How'd that go? Up? It works for me. All right, same up. <laughs> Phil is in. How's everybody doing? Let's go one by one. Uh, you know, pronunciation of names because clearly, you know, I can't do it. <laughs> so. Jaquise, please go ahead. Oh, no. oh, thank you so much, Don. Uh, what's up? I'm Jackie Neal, and I am uh, I'm Don in the mask of Spider Man, but it's Miles Morales. I am Miles Morales in Superhero Diaries. Nice. Love it. Love, love, love. Hi, everyone. My name is Harisi St. Cyr, and I am the incomparable Catwoman of Superhero Diaries. And, um, yes, my name is Don Jeans, and I play Batman. And you're uh, matching your blue wall. Very, very good. Very good. Blue way. Uh, I play the Adam. Uh, the Wrestle Watch episode, you'll see me. I'm really good. Everybody yeah. just does the early Mickey Mouse voice and just changes it. And it's Mr. Hanky and, and, and uh, Cowley and everything else. And him. <laughs> and the Adam. And then Don's going to change his background at some point. We're going to lose him. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'd be totally gone. I'm going to blend right in. Yeah. When I told guys... myself not to wear the shirt today. Because <laughs> you wanted to prove that you went golfing, Don? Is that what it is? Yeah, I, I don't even golf, which is the ironic thing. I just like to dress like because it's hot in Texas. That's all. Uh, yeah. it's, it, you don't have to iron this. That's, like, that's it. Uh, Usually we have him sweating in his Batman costume when we see him. That, that, 
That's right. I'm just taking the opportunity to be a little cooler than normal. Yeah. That that mask is like a sauna suit for your face. Uh, I've never met me another time when somebody puts on their costume and is then himself. That is as different as you could possibly be. He doesn't sound like him. He barely looks like him. <laughs> Show him time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's, I don't know. I just get it a little different. I can't even do it without the, the, the cowl on. I, I can't. I need it. I need, it's like a crutch now. I feel yeah. naked without it doing the voice. Well, Harris, you're stepping into the, the Catwoman suit. You know, uh, you're, you're following uh, Eartha Kitt and Halle Berry in the role. You know, when you got the script and you realized, you know, the, the satirical aspect of it, what made you just want to jump right into it to where... A, you know, a leather outfit in the hot sun. The other two guys are wearing horrible masks on top of everything else. I mean, you can't turn down such an iconic role in any capacity, satirical, serious, any capacity. You just jump in and are grateful to do it. That's the first thing. And then second of all, Scott just kind of had such a clear vision for me of like how he saw this world. And uh, um, it made a lot of sense that I had not seen anything done like this before. And it made a lot of sense that, oh, great. The world does need something like this to combine, you know, of course, laughter and then the canon of all the DC and Marvel uh, fiction that's out there. So I couldn't imagine a better combination of like worlds and genres to be a part of. And you get to sit there and put on a black leather suit on top of everything else. I mean, yeah. Hello, hello. Casting, casting typecasting. <laughs> No, she's actually the sweetest person in the world, dude. Thank you. She, she comes in there and you just, she really, I, you know, I used to hate actors until I realized that it's because a lot of actors are, shouldn't have come to audition for me because they wasted both our times. <laughs> I love talented actors. Well, that's the important thing because everybody's really talented in this and everyone's having a good time. Phil Lamar uh, comes in as the Green Lantern for the first time in the physical embodiment of the character. Yeah. You know, I'm assuming everybody lost a good 20, 30 pounds just by sweating it out and running around uh, and uh, playing <clears throat> pretend. In the costume, yeah, that I should have put on a costume. That, uh, the the Spider-Man costume, so not only, you know, it, it wasn't so much that it was hot, like I've been in hot costumes before, um, but I can't, I couldn't see. <laughs> like with the, the eyes, it is, so there were times on on set, especially when we had some uh, some scenes shot outside, where I'm literally turned into my actor uh, next to me and saying like, "You're you're my eyes. I need you to <laughs> to let me know where to walk, uh, or just give me the general direction of where I need to look, because at least my eyes don't have to miss, my actual eyes don't have to be." you know, where my face as Spider-Man <laughs> uh, needs to be. So that you was the nature. number one thing for me. You so were you were Daredevil. Nature. Sorry. I was going to say, so you were Daredevil cosplaying as Miles Morales. <laughs> Pretty much, man. Pretty much. It was, it, I'm telling you, the, the, the costume, first of all, the costumes, it was really cool. I, you know, as, as somebody in their mid-30s who probably isn't going to be getting the call from MCU uh, to be Spider-Man anytime soon. Uh, it was really cool to see Don as Batman or Harisi as, uh, as Catwoman and Phil as Green Lantern and all the people in their costumes looking pretty legit. Uh, so putting on the Spider-Man costume and looking in the mirror, um, I was like, all right, all right. You know, you can probably eat a few less slices of cake, but you still look dope. And it was really cool to <laughs> to see like all of us in these iconic suits, um, even if they were hot and sweaty, it was still a pretty cool thing to see. Well, you guys had a soft launch in the beginning part of the year and the world was still yeah. relatively shut down. And now it's uh, LA's shutting itself down again because, you know, I think we're intentionally we trying to crack packs. the housing market. <laughs> <laughs> we shoot, you know, between uh, mask mandates. Right. Well, you know, the Spider-Men didn't were already COVID compliant, so you guys were good to go That's with true. that already. And meanwhile, That's Don true. had this the, the mask in the wrong place. <laughs> it was over the nose, just not over the mouth. So yeah, but so on a natural play. projector, so no one was safe. But I, I'm vaxxed. I'm vaxxed. So okay, vaxxed, I'm vaxxed. Anyway. 
right? That was the rule. Everybody had to be vaxxed on the set. Yes. Yeah. And and Don is a mouth breather anyway, so it worked out perfectly. That's <laughs> it. Snore, mouth breather. It's horrible. <laughs> Don't listen to me eat. It's, it's bad. <laughs> but do listen to him when he's had a few beers. <laughs> <laughs> So take us through the process of everything because you know we're. I, it looks like it was probably shot in Scott's backyard at this point, mm. you know, with, with some of the scenes. Like, you know, take us through the scheduling itself, getting everybody together. Half of you now live in Texas. Half of you, I believe, are still in California. Somebody's somewhere in Wyoming, just hiding out from the government at this point. Like, <laughs> like take us through the scheduling and the filming process of this, especially in the middle of a pandemic. Right. So, are you you're talking about once we went and uh, to the location? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I got a little bit confused because I at first I thought, oh, it'd be a bunch of people just coming together and, and we'll use our iPhones. And then I'm like, well, Don's in Texas. Nina, who plays Wonder Woman, who's freaking great, by the way, uh, was in New York and uh, Captain America was in New York. So I ended up filming, you know, flying those three people out and then putting that we, we got a um, Airbnb. And we uh, basically everybody lived there. That was, you know, both housing and location. Um, not my backyard. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Which but, I will have to say was a lot of fun and very convenient. It doesn't sound like it at first, but then you're like, wait a second. We shoot. And then I don't have to go back to a hotel. I just, my room's right there. So we can yeah. do this and, and there's no travel to set in the morning. So we wake up and... When you guys are ready, I'll go throw in the costume. It was it was a great experience, and we're improving. So Don was, was like working a, out in the morning. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah, I got to yeah. go get my workout in. There's plenty of time. Well, Him and also the there Captain was, America actor, right? Yes, and there was because there was pool scenes, and there's a lot of pressure when you're supposed to look like a superhero, and there's a pool scene. Come on, yes. And it was a 25 yeah. year old uh, guy who's a physical fitness. Uh, so, but you guys yeah. hung in there. You hung with them. Yeah. So yeah. you guys all lived together during the, the shoot of the series. Just the three out of town. No, oh, no. Three out of town. I was going to say, because who had the worst bathroom schedule at that point? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have. That would be great to like, you know, go. Somebody asked me, are we going to do a superhero uh, Dyer's movie? It's like, sure. Give me the money. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. It'd probably make a hundred dollars in the box office. <laughs> and then you can do what DC did with the Charleston characters and just create your own version of Watchmen so you didn't have to reuse characters that already existed. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. See, uh, you go. We, we got ideas for you guys now. Absolutely. It's flowing. It's flowing. It's a thing. Well, you know, that's what, what I want to play. I want to play, I want to play Captain uh, Manhattan, you know, so I can, like, uh, you know, show my blue skin. So, where else were we? Oh, we're just, we're just going through it. So the three actors lived together in an Airbnb. You and we know? hung out at night, and then the other actors came in during the day. But my biggest mistake was once I knew that this thing was getting better, bigger, and I was like, okay, I'm flying these actors, and you know, these are my stars, this particular, these, these three and two others are the ones who started it. They're, they're like my uh, stars cast. So I'm bringing all this together, and then finally I'm like, well, I got to shoot on a great camera. So all of a sudden we had a camera department. Well, I probably should have had somebody for wardrobe and suddenly it was growing, but not big enough. So we were constantly, I was like constantly keeping the schedule in my head and we we're figuring, okay, we don't need to get this. We could get that piece of it. I mean, it could be caused partially it was improv. So we can, it, we can justify things in a way that you, you wouldn't necessarily do. We can do extra little pickups, you know, Don missed the line because we changed the line and we'll get on, we'll do this. And we'll, we'll answer the question. And this one's for all the actors. How much more fun was it that you got to riff off each other and, and play, uh, play more uh, freely than if it was like a stricter set for you in other projects that you've worked on? Um, I, you know, I, um, I, I do improv comedy professionally here in Los Angeles. Um, and so you would think it's very easy, but in a lot of ways it's actually harder. Um, which is a testament to how good everybody is uh, because it's much easier to just give me a script, tell me exactly what I'm going to say, and then you say it, <laughs> you know? Uh, but as we're doing this and everybody's so funny, but you're also still trying to tell a story, you know? You're, you're still trying to tell a story that makes sense. Um, you still, as, as a performer, want 
uh, what you're saying to make sense in the world that we're setting ourselves in. Um, so we would find things through improv and we could, you know, riff here and there and stuff like that. But the roadmap that we needed was still there. Um, you know, Scott and the team provided us with the roadmap. Uh, so in many ways, it was very fun, but it, it does add an extra challenge uh, to, uh, to the process, which is why shows that do that, you know, generally like season two and beyond, the show is even better. <laughs> because like they get so much used to everybody's timing and they're used to everybody's, you know, sense of humor. And, you know, I hate the term like throwing alley-oops and improv, but you get used to like, all right, I know like the type of player or the type of performer this person is. So I can throw him something that I know he'll slam dunk and things like that. The more you get to know that um, when you're in a situation where you are just kind of riffing and improvising with the roadmap, uh, the easier it gets, uh, but it's still very fun no matter what, at least for me. So what you're saying is we're getting a second one. I mean, you know, Scott. Of course. Asking, you know, that's... <laughs> of course, just uh, it's Samo, it's up to you, man. You got to go make us <laughs> big. Yeah, well. Uh, can I just talk about the improv thing? I know that uh, Don and I actually vibe on this a little bit too. I have great improvisers, so I do give them bullet points. I have written certain scenes because certain scenes, you know, for whatever reason, we had to hit it a certain way. But like, there are lines, some of my very favorite lines in my script, if you want to call it my script, I didn't write. It came out of things that I would, nobody could imagine that would come out of, uh, you know, a typewriter. They're just genius. And we had two groundlings, like two legendary groundlings and, and Patrick Bristow who plays Alfred and, and Phil Lamar um, and these guys are right there you know we, we cast really really well and these guys literally I mean I think all three of you are trained improv actors right that's a I know that Jaquise and Don are I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in because I think you should end on a high note and Don is amazing so I know he's gonna oh, oh this was a breeze for me so <laughs> I'm going to jump in and say, yes, I am a trained improviser, but um, this this has been definitely such a challenge for me because, like Jackie's mentioned, um, the storytelling and that stress that, you know, sometimes we put on ourselves to, like, tell a complete story and get the facts right and bring this thing to life. When you're improvising, I feel like, for, for me at least, it's been really difficult. Um, but because I have such amazing improvisers around me, it has given me a lot more confidence and riffing off of them. And, um, and I like rising to that occasion of like, okay, we don't know what's going to happen here. Stay nimble, stay ready to receive whatever comes your way. But, uh, it, it's definitely been, um, I stay up at nights thinking about it the night before, <laughs> like, I have to be good as Don and Jaquise and ah, you know, it gets a little stressful. So, uh, first of all, you don't ever have to jump in, just jump in whenever you want. You don't have to make an announcement. And second of all, what you're really trying to tell us is that you're funnier than the two of them, but you're trying to give them <laughs> that, like, that's like that's some sort of respect and all this. All right. That, that is very true. She, Horacey is very funny. Absolutely. Yeah. And a wonder, and and a domineering funny as cat woman would be. You could, I could tell she put a lot of thought into her character. And you can also tell that, that Jaquise has a lot of improv training because he is so subtle, but is so funny and makes it so easy to be funny. And it is a pleasure to do improv with both of them. So to jump on that, yes, I will definitely agree that it is hard doing improv when you have multiple bullet points in a scene to hit. I think that was the hardest thing is to memorize those bullet points and make sure we're hitting each one of them because yeah. there would usually be about 10 in a scene that we would need to get through in that one scene. Now, when you've got two or three, okay, we can hit that and we can get through that. When you got 10, it gets a little more difficult, but okay, and I'm gonna say what exactly you're thinking. I love it, bro. I love it, man. Let me loose, baby. It's it's like it's like Scott has this ball, right? And I'm a Labrador retriever. I'm like, are you gonna throw that ball, bro? Are you gonna let me do some improv, bro? Are you gonna throw that ball? This is an improv scene. Throw the ball, bro. Throw it, throw it. And so he he throws it. He lets us loose, and we get to go do some improv. 
Uh, and 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 like he said, doing improv with Phil and um, you know, sort of, it, it, they were it was they were so kind and so generous and so amazing. It was a dream come true. Uh, and and with everybody else, and I will say the the most complimentary thing I can say about everybody on that cast is in, in an ensemble cast when you have so many people. Uh, trying to do improv you know it's it's okay when you've got two or three uh maybe you can get to four and you can still keep something kind of organized but we had 10 people maybe sometimes 11 doing an improv scene yeah and 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 everybody was being civil and giving each other time to hit their lines and hit their points and that was the most amazing thing to me is because that's that's kind of hard to do and and kudos to everybody on the cast for that is because they were they were very generous with each other's time and letting each other giving each other the time to hit their points and be like okay you're gonna hit this and you're gonna hit this and let me let me like the audio stuff like that let me let me set this up for this guy so that was that was a beautiful thing about the set is we were doing improv in, in those large casts and it, and it really worked very well I think I think it'll be a lot of fun to watch I think, I think though uh, by the next time we shoot though all those niceties will disappear <laughs> yeah. we're gonna be yes. all over we're gonna be stuff. it's my line. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> it's you know the thing too. You know it's, it's very likened to if anybody is a fan of um, like Curb Your Enthusiasm, right? Like most of that is unscripted in a way um, that's different than a scripted television show. So you know they have an outline, they know everything they want to hit and things like that. Um, but when we get on set and we start improvising the scene, like the way the process usually goes is. You'll probably have a rehearsal, then you'll probably shoot the scene once, and then you'll shoot it again, and then you'll shoot different camera angles and things like that. So by the time we get to, you know, the second time we're, like, doing this scene, a lot of times we as actors have set what we want to, what we want to talk, what we want to say. We may say a different word here or there, but we've said it in a way uh, that makes sense for us. So it... It is improv, but it's very much like improv to find um, the actual story that we want to tell within the scene. And the part that is hard is, you know, nothing is ever shot in order. So it's remembering because once we're done, I don't have a script to go back to and be like, what do we say? (laughs) So that was also a challenging thing that everybody made super easy. I never felt, um, even when it felt hectic on set, I never felt that the cast around me was overwhelmed uh, to the point where we weren't going to get some really funny stuff uh, once once the camera started rolling. It is so much fun doing the improv and, and coming up with just being in there and being like a jam session, right? We get in there and we're like, okay, like you said, everything you said, Jackie, sounds like when you're jamming with uh, other musicians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Even though I wouldn't know I can play an instrument. But if I... <laughs> When when you guys put it all together and you're and you're working on it and you put on the costume, obviously there's something about putting on the costume that you end up feeling that you've embodied the character at some point, uh, and you start riffing and just playing off each other. At some point, Scott calls cut, but you guys are still having so much fun that the riffing keeps going. Was there something that after he stopped rolling? But like, w- was so much fun that he got upset at everybody going, damn it, I didn't get it on camera. Can we like try that again? <laughs> uh, that only with the stun people. I'm like watching, I'm like, why didn't you do that on camera? <laughs> I think it was also like, we were just being so loud and you couldn't be as loud in the neighborhood we were at. And he was like, guys, you can't, you can't keep doing that. You get a bunch of actors together anyway. And they're just gonna, you know. Yeah. we're best set friends now we're set friends yeah. forever yeah. we yeah. started a facebook yeah. group every year we get yeah. together at the house <laughs> <laughs> there is there's never there's never a group of people that become best of friends as quick as a group of actors on set um so you know i i, I think by the time we got but especially that second night uh it wasn't so much scott saying oh that was so funny uh, you know why didn't you do that on camera it was hey guys i need you to settle down we are losing daylight <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like we need stop, to shoot stop, this stop, now stop, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that happened more than than anything else i think 
And I rarely yell. That, uh, that, um, the fact that I had had scenes only via Zoom with Don and with Nina. And so it was like, it heightened it even more. We got together in person. We're like, hi, I'm so glad to finally meet you in person. Very true. So, yeah. yeah. I was so happy to hug you. I never met yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you too. Yeah. You smell good. That's probably uh, Chiquita, you did too. Uh, you know, I didn't, but thank you. <laughs> John Flipper. All right. So, yeah, I, I know we only were given a set amount of time and we're running out of time because uh, that's unfortunately how I said it because I listened to Lindsay. So it's all Lindsay's fault. You know, the PR person. No, I love her. She's, she's been sweet to us so far. Uh, okay. <laughs> so far. When you put this on the podcast, you're going to keep this part on? Yeah, sure. All right. Freaking hate Lindsay, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, she's terrific, man. Yeah. She is. Well, like the thing that terrifies me. Not all good people. Is, you know yeah. Sorry. No, Scott, you can talk up your crew all you want, man. You, you know, you always hear on the EKG, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's so easy to work. But I hear this lovely sincerity here, which I love. But like every once in a while, like when I start working with Don and I tell, remind it how good he is and I'm like, uh, tell him, he goes, huh, Scott, really? It's, you know, it's the material and the environment you said. I'm like, shut up and save it for another director. We have worked so many times together. You know? <laughs> He sees he's bragging on me now. It's, 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 stop. No, no. Man, dude. It, 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 he put it together. This, this doesn't happen. A lot of stuff doesn't happen without the writer producers. And we're, we're all very grateful to be here. Yeah. Don, save it for Thanks. Me. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, my thing is, like, what scares me the most, they're like musicals. Like, movie musicals terrify me. And I know most actors have had, like, musical theater experience. Mm -hmm. Who was like the most annoying, musically talented or challenged person on set besides Scott, you know, that, that was goofing off in costume the most? The other Spider-Man. So there's two Spider-Man. There's Peter yeah. Parker and Miles Morales. Uh, and so and he knows how to play a guitar, which you'll, you know, spoiler alert, you may see that. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so, you know, and he's just young fit you know early 20s just like just good tap dancing and dance just good at everything I, his name is Bobby. Back looks great um but yeah he we have a scene together where we both have to sing and and he's playing the guitar and you know i'm i, I i've been in musicals i don't mind letting the voice out but he was definitely the one where i was just like oh you just good at everything huh <laughs> um, he is, and he's so he's so sweet, and he he Sweetest looks more dude. like Spider Man than uh, uh, the kid who's playing him now. Uh, yeah, Tom Holland. Yeah, he's just he's just beautiful. He's got that that uh, you know innocence to him. You know, and he, he, is, he is frustratingly handsome and gifted. It's not. Yeah. It, he shouldn't. He shouldn't he's be like that. Here, Don. You don't have to kiss his ass. No, I'm not. Kiss, I'm not kissing his butt. I'm mad at him. Yeah, we. Yeah, I'm upset it. with that we're young man. He yeah. even looked good in his Spider-Man costume. Yeah, it like, does. He yeah. looked fit. You know, he didn't have to have the drawn-on abs like I had to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. So, Samo, what Samo, what character do you want to play? Me? Yeah, Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm Lebanese. I got to be Simon Baz. There you go. I got to be the other Green Lantern. <laughs> one of the 10, 50 of them? Yeah. One of, one of the 75 that Earth has because Earth is so screwed up that it's not even yeah. a sector. We just have that many Green Lanterns. Yeah. Let's, let's go down the uh, politics rabbit hole. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> then we'll be here for another six years. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're, you know, Superhero Diaries is coming to YouTube, Facebook. Uh, you guys got the Instagram page and everything else. Uh, the, the full launch is Tuesday. What's one of the reasons people need to tune in and watch Superhero Diaries? Let's go one by one. Whoever wants to start first. Scott, you mean the new season? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's after you, Scott. You should you want me to start? take us off. Um, just ask the question again. I said sure the I one reason why everyone needs to tune in to the, to the new season. Okay. So July 21st everything uh, opens up again, right? The world opens up and Superhero Diary opens up, right? And you got to see what Batman is up to. Uh, and that will be, you know, so we have that little uh, cliffhanger. We also have, um, for whatever reason, seems to be the most popular guy in the set, Phil Lamar, 
is uh, playing with Don in that first episode. And I just showed this to my partner, who is not the easiest guy in the world. He said, I've never laughed so hard in one of our episodes. It's like, because they were together. And because they were great. And we, we cut it together with the Captain America part of the scene, and it just really plays beautifully. So you want to you see Filmar, you want to see Don crying, you want to see... <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, you want to see Captain America, you know, looking like Captain America? That's why you got to come in, watch some special effects, a little bit of green action. And uh, even better than that, we will be right there interacting with you right away. Plus, if you sign up now, you, there's a contest for a thousand bucks, but don't put that in. That's cheesy. <laughs> Unless, of course, you think it'll get more audience. No, no, don't. But... <laughs> Jakey, set us up, man. Let's let's find out. Yeah, you know, listen. I think um, I think you know the world of comic book movies and superhero movies has been around for a while, but you know it's definitely exploded in the past thirteen years with you know Iron Man and Dark Knight coming out in the same year, and then MCU just kind of uh, you know blowing up and becoming just the ultimate storytelling franchise. So I think in a way. Uh, which is why I think Deadpool was so successful. Um, we have started to take superhero movies uh, way more seriously than we ever have, right? And this kind of adds the levity back to um, a lot of these characters in a way that I think is super fun. So uh, yeah, you're going to see some really dope stuff. You know, also come to Phil Lamar, <laughs> like, like, like Scott said. But I, I really think the reason you should watch it is just to, to to laugh a little bit with some of these characters that you know very well. You know, you don't need to set up. We're not going to give you the Batman uh, parents dying or Spider-Man getting bit by a spider. You know all that already. So you're just coming for the laughs and the levity that these characters generally can bring that we have started to go away from as we've taken the medium a lot more seriously um, in television and film. I love it. Don, uh, hit us up next. Reese, you're taking us home. Uh, I will say that you may have seen a superhero parody before, but what you haven't seen is a superhero parody with this level of production value. Mm -hmm. You may have seen one superhero playing it, but you've seen them interacting with normal. You haven't seen them interacting with multiple, multiple superheroes yeah, in multiple locations, uh, intercut with professional footage from everywhere. So that's what you're going to see for one. Uh, number two, you're going to get consistent releases of episodes on a weekly basis. We're not going anywhere. So you can rely on us. Your story is going to stay there. And you're going to get the more personal side of these superheroes. It's not just, uh, like you keep saying, this is not just the typical backlog we're gonna we're improvis, we're professional improvis, we're gonna come at you, we're gonna give you some fun stuff that you might not know about these superheroes before that <laughs> really might not even have anything to do with their backlogs, it just has something to do with a funny story that happens to them. So it's gonna be very interesting, it's gonna be consistent, and the production value is through the roof. Over to you, madame. <laughs> I was scared you were gonna say my answer, which is very simple. You should tune in because you're going to see these characters as everyday people. We've already seen them as superheroes. Now we're going to get into their personal lives, their romantic histories, their weaknesses, what they cry about at night. The things we will never see, I'm sure, in a big budget film, a big Marvel Universe film. This is amazing to see. To see the imaginative world of the everyday lives, personal stories of these superheroes. And that is what is so exciting and fun to watch. I love it. Everyone, Who those guys with their billion dollar budgets? <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate everything. We're going to link everybody to your social medias uh, at the bottom of the, the link and the series itself. July 21st, uh, Wednesday, July 21st, uh, Superhero Diaries, YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere else we can find it. Thank you so much. All right, make sure you check it now too, because we are online as we speak.